The Birth of Bran, Chapter 5 In course of time, the news came to Fionn that his mother's sister was not living with Elon. He at once sent a messenger calling for fulfilment of the pledge that had been given to the Fianna, and demanding the instant return of Turin. Elon was in a sad condition when this demand was made. He guessed that Luck Jalv had a hand in the disappearance of his queen, and he begged that time should be given him in which to find the lost girl. He promised, if he could not discover her within a certain period, that he would deliver his body into Fionn's hands, and would abide by whatever judgment Fionn might pronounce. The great captain agreed to that. Tell the wife loser, I will have the girl or I will have his head, said Fionn. Elon set out then for Fairy. He knew the way, and in no great time he had come to the hill where Ochjalv was. It was hard to get Ochjalv to meet him, but at last she consented, and they met under the apple boughs at Fairy. Well, said Ochjalv, I have good boughs and traitor to love, said she. Hail and blessing, said Elon humbly. By my hand, she cried. I will give you no blessing, for it was no blessing you left with me when we parted. I am in danger, said Elon. What is that to me? She replied fiercely. Fionn may claim my head, he murmured. Let him claim what he can take, said she. No, said Elon proudly. I will claim what I can give. Tell me your tale, she said coldly. Elon told his story then, and he concluded, I am certain that you have hidden the girl. If I save your head from Fionn, the woman of the she replied, then your head will belong to me. That is true, said Elon. And if your head is mine, the body that goes under it is mine. Do you agree to that? I do, said Elon. Give me your pledge, said Ochjalv, that if I save you from this danger, you will keep me as your sweetheart until the end of life and time. I give that pledge, said Elon. Ochjalv went then to the house of Fergus Finlat, and she broke the enchantment and was that was on the hound, so that Turin's own shape came back to her. But in the matter of the two small whelps to which the hound had given birth, the enchantment could not be broken. So they had to remain as they were. These two whelps were Bran and Skiolan. They were sent to Fionn, and he loved them forever after. For they were loyal and affectionate, as only dogs can be. And they were as intelligent as human beings. Beside that, they were Fionn's two cousins. Turin was then asked in marriage by Ludwig, who had loved her for so long. He had to prove to her that he was not any other girl's sweetheart, and when he proved that they were married, then they were married, and they lived happily ever after, which is the proper way to live. He wrote a poem beginning, Lovely the day, dear is the eye of the dawn, and the thousand merry people learned it after him. But as to Fergus Finlat, he took to his bed, and he stayed there for a year and a day, suffering from blighted affection. And he would have died in the bed only for Fionn sent him a special pup. And in a week, that young hound became the star of fortune and the very pulse of his heart, so that he got well again, and he also lived happily ever after. The End